What's going on everybody? Brian Mann here, Hands-On Auto Training. Today I've got the Power Probe Draw Tool, the PP Draw. I like it. This tool's pretty sweet. The idea of this tool is that if you do have a draw, or if you think you have a draw, you can go ahead and charge the battery on a car, start it up, take it for a test drive, do all that, let the vehicle sit, and if you need to, put a maintainer on it, prep the vehicle, flip door latches. Be sure to check out Hands-On Auto Training on the membership site. We do have how to test for draws on there. But what I'm getting at is you can have the vehicle fully prepped, leave the vehicle for a while, 20 minutes, half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour, whatever. Then you go ahead and plug in this tool, turn it on. Then you can go ahead and disconnect the battery. This tool has a 3000 milliamp hour battery that will go ahead and power up the vehicle through the DLC. You know, the DLC is always hot. There's usually a 10 amp or 5 amp fuse in my experiences, sometimes a 7.5 amp, depending on the car. But check it out. Be sure to look in service information before you do this. But you will be able to power up the car through this tool for a period of time. And when it's doing that, it measures the amperage. So we can see if we have a draw. In service information, depending on the vehicle you're working on, looking for parasitic draw, parasitic load, drain as a keyword, you may find the actual specification for the car that you're working on. Most vehicles are going to be less than 60 milliamps. And many times, in my experience, the draw is going to be around 20 or 30 at most in normal circumstances, depending on the vehicle, of course. So today we're going to go ahead and use a bench demonstration to take a look at what's going on here. Let me go ahead and show you on a uh, circuit diagram how this is working, because I wanted to test the accuracy of this tool. I was very concerned to make sure that this tool was accurate. So you see here we have ourselves a power supply that powers up a breadboard. Okay, so just so you know, if you're not familiar with breadboards, what we're doing is anything in this row, as you see it all highlights green, anything in this row is connected together. So if I have this red terminal here off of our power supply, which is our battery positive, if you will, it is connected to this red one and this red one. Same with our ground, our ground is all in line here. So basically I have some 1000 ohm resistors. I'm trying to duplicate what it would be like to see a small draw on a car. Uh, these resistors can be turned on or off because everything in these rows, these vertical rows are tied to each other, except for down the middle of this breadboard, this middle section is not tied together until I flip this switch. When the switch is in the on position, it does connect this row to this row. So we can turn on four 1000 ohm resistors. We also have a slide switch to turn a uh, light bulb on or off. We also have a momentary push button to turn a light bulb on or off. So let's go ahead and start the simulation. Just so you guys know, this is using tinkercad.com. I recommend you check it out. It's free, I'll put a link in the description for you. We're gonna start our simulation and you can see I have a light bulb on and it says we're driving 298 milliamps. So let me go ahead and push this other button. Pushing this button here turns this light bulb on or off. I can turn a switch off and you can see we've got 48 milliamps. Let me turn off these resistors one by one. And you can see we can turn them all off and we have zero milliamps. So that's cool. So uh, on our demonstration board, we're gonna see if we get the same results. But what we're also gonna do is basically have our DLC in line over here, uh, should I say tied in, spliced in, and a ammeter to double check the accuracy of the power probe draw tool. So let's go ahead and check this out on the bench. So over here, we do have our little push button switch to turn the light bulb on or off. You can see that that does work right there. And then we've got our dip switches to turn on the resistors. And we can also turn on this light bulb on or off there. So we've got 13 volts is our power supply here. So you can think about this as the battery. Uh, right here, this is gonna be our battery negative or battery positive. I'm gonna go ahead and push our push button switch. You can see we have 0.226 amps, that's 226 milliamps. I'm gonna push my, or should I say flip my other switch, and we've got 224 milliamps, push them together. Of course, the amperage adds up. And we can flip all of these dip switches to the on position here. There you go, and I'll go ahead and turn off this switch, and you can see we got 52 milliamps. Now, if we had ourselves, let's say, a situation with a draw on a vehicle, we would wanna have the vehicle in the shop, all the doors open, or actually accessible anything we wanna take apart. So usually we open up the doors, flip the latches, use a squeeze clamp to push the push button uh, for the door jar switch. The hood open, flip the hood latch. If we have a fuse block in the trunk, maybe we gotta access the trunk, you wanna go ahead and open that. We want the vehicle to be in a state that it is 
uh, ready to go to sleep. And we would let time pass here. We go ahead and let a lot of time pass at this point. And we would get our PP draw tool and we could put, plug it in. And as you see here, this is not on. We don't have anything on yet. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. And you see that this says there's 12.9 volts here. So right now, if I disconnect our battery, we're gonna kill the vehicle. We have to hit the smart output button. But before we do that, I want you guys to see here on this tool, go into the settings and there is an APO. That's an automatic power off. I like to have that off, okay? You can turn it on to five minutes, 10 minutes or 15 minutes. But in the field the other day, it was on 15 minutes and I was about 15 minutes in. I came back to the car and everything was off. And I was kind of like, what the heck? Well, it has an automatic power off uh, function. So make sure you guys go ahead and turn it off. It's up to you if you want to uh, have it on. There's also a an, uh, basically a warning alarm. You can put it to the milliamp uh, rating or the amp rating that you want. So if I have more than, let's say if I have more than 400 milliamps, I want to know about it, but we can go down to, let's see, we can set that at let's say 50 milliamps, like if our service information tells us it must not be more than 50 milliamps, we can have a little alert come up on the screen and tell us about it. So that's pretty cool there. The next step we're gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead and hit our smart output button. So I'm gonna hit the back button and smart output means that you're gonna see something change on this ammeter more than likely. You may see some a change on it as I hit smart output. Let's take a look. And the amperage stayed the same there. This says three milliamps. Now. I've had a little bit of a variance in this, about three milliamps or so, but what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna disconnect my negative cable on my battery. So this is putting out a smart output, as they say. So if our battery voltage drops off, I want you to see what happens here. I'm gonna pull the plug. Our amperage changed just a little bit because of a difference in voltage, because this is only putting out 12.2 volts. But you can see we've got our little alarm on here, our little lighting up uh, red indicator of 50 milliamps, and that's because we have more than 50 milliamps. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the switch off and you can see we are down to 16 milliamps. Pretty cool stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and flip on more dip switches. So that's all four dip switches on. Our reading here is 52 milliamps and you can see over on the fluke meter, we got 49 milliamps. So this is off by about three milliamps in my experience. And how do I know it's off? is because if I turn everything off here and I, my fluke meter reads zero and I know for a fact I don't have any current flowing because none of these circuits are on, this still says three milliamps. I've had different days I've played with it and had this, different results, but I tell you what, three milliamps is not gonna make you or break you testing a draw. But let's go ahead and flip this on one switch at a time. We got 13 here, 15 here, 25 here, 27 here, 28. 40 and 37, 49 and 52. Like I said, about three milliamps off and I can go ahead and turn this on all the way and see what's going on. The other cool thing about this tool is the Power Probe Link app. So you wanna get the Power Probe Link app going. And it does say, please turn on my Bluetooth, so I better do that. And we have to hit the link button here and it's trying to link up. Hopefully you guys can see that on the screen, but uh, it says it's connecting. Now, on this screen here, oh, my auto rotates off, there we go. On my screen, it shows me the voltage, 12.2 volts and 267 milliamps. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my little light bulb. You can see the amperage goes down. So this is awesome. If you're dealing with a shaved green harness or something like that, you could be walking around a vehicle and wiggling uh, harnesses and stuff and be like, oh, do I have a draw? Look at, you can see, I'm tapping that button and you can see it go up and down. Now, I don't know the resolution of this. Like, you know, how fast does the problem have to happen before it'll catch it? I mean, if I go real quick, it didn't catch it, but that's okay because most times you're gonna see a blip in the radar, if you will. So this is pretty neat. We can go ahead and fire up all these switches and you can see the amperage is up to 470, 468. Pretty neat stuff. I think this tool is going to be a time saver in the future. Let me just go ahead and get this to what a normal draw is. I usually see 15 milliamps or maybe even 20 or 30. This is good. We don't have a problem here. So overall, I think this is a fantastic tool. I think if you do one or two draw testings a month, this is going to save you a lot of time and effort in the field. 
Remember, you can have the battery hooked up, you can have the vehicle test driven, all kinds of stuff. Prep the vehicle, have all the door latches undone and all that stuff so you can access it. And you, you just plug this in after 30, 40 minutes, plug this in, hit the smart output, disconnect the battery, you'll know if you have a draw or not. Pretty cool tool by Power Probe. Be sure to check out the link in the description for hands-on auto training. I have a lot of training on the membership site. It's 10 bucks a month for the core, 30 bucks a month for the premium. You guys let me know if you have any questions. Have a great day. Bye-bye.